tumoto ya nako kikoloba Ezali ya solo na yebite Afrika Oke okay, wapi Ezali ya solo na yebite Afrika Oke okay, wapi Wapo na loba akalinga late Na loba akalinga late Wapo na loba akalinga late in the hot and semi-arid zones of northern Cameroon, thousands of locals plow the fields, harvesting an estimated 350,000 tons of cotton annually. Most of it is bought by the Cameroon Cotton Development Company, Sode Coton, in existence since the 70s. Yet only 2% of this cotton is processed locally, the rest is exported. L'industrie du coton textile joue un rôle très important dans notre économie. Sa production mobilise environ près de 200. The cotton textile industry plays an important role in our economy. There are close to 250,000 producers and support structures. It's a lifeline for about 2 million people in the far north and north regions where cotton production is quite developed and generates a lot of activities around processing with a significant impact on job creation. In urban centers like outback parts, used clothes and Asian-made cotton textile clothing fill the markets. This is what most Cameroonians wear. Even the string of shops displaying a rich variety of African prints. At the Brikateri enclave in Yaoundé, bear little of Cameroonian origin. The country's lone cotton textile processing plant, Sikam, mourns a sharp fall in its activities. It now controls only 5% of the cotton textile clothing sector. Couvrons toute l'Afrique centrale à ce jour pour ce qui est du textile. Mais nul n'est prophète chez soi. Chez nous-mêmes, la cotonnière industrielle du Cameroun, la SICAM, occupe. We cover all of Central Africa, but like they say, a prophet is never known in his homeland. SICAM occupies less than 5% of the textile markets. Its 5% comes from Asia, the rest from the West African coast. These productions unfortunately do not reflect textile standards in Cameroon because they are not 100% cotton, like our products. They are polyester and other materials sold at giveaway prices, for example, 3,000 francs or less. However, there were laws regulating this sector. There were anti-doping laws which are not respected. It will be difficult for SICAM to regain its normal consumers if as long as these laws are not respected. It is very difficult for us to produce 100% cotton textile, clothing with our current production factors, and yet compete with prices from dumping. The state is reviving SICAM, renewing its production equipment. The real difficulty is with the non-respect of laws regulating the market, we will have hard, healthier competition. We can satisfy the market in terms of quantity. Before the invasion of Asian textiles, there was only the West African coast. We covered the market sufficiently. We supplied school uniforms. But today, we have almost no schools as clients. Fabrics now come from Asia. You can imagine the losses incurred by SICAM. We can only supply the market if we have the means. Plus, support from startups can cover the markets. We are a member of the WTO, you remember? And uh, there is competitiveness. For you to sell, you have to be highly competitive. I think that's what is lacking somehow. So they have to move from this traditional way of or design to do things that are more attractive to the public understand? I think that's where the problem is. a problem of capacity. I mean, the quality and all that that plays. So we try to protect the local producers. We do a lot of efforts because uh, not, of, uh, not long ago, we had to 
there was an operation in the field where Sikam came and gave a report on some fake products that were in the market. In that case, the Ministry of Trade comes in. But we can't go to the market to seize products that meet standards. Across the country, outfits that boast a Cameroonian brand are sprouting. One of them belongs to Valentine. So this is the only fabric that is produced locally in Cameroon, which is called Atogo. The, the Europeans call it mud dress because, you know, it is tie and dye with fiber. They use fiber, they tie the, the white parts. When they dial in, they undo the fiber and then you find it really traditional. Um, you know, believe me, it is very, very difficult. It takes time to produce 3.5 meters of this dress will take you about two weeks. The meter is about 20,000 of the first quality. At his small shop at Ubili in Yaoundé, he crafts beautiful clothing items and accessories, highlighting embroideries that add value to locally made clothing now in high demand at home and abroad. I was, first of all, highlighting uh, ladies' suits and men's suits. But when I studied fashion designing, I segmented my market and put traditional dresses, they are togo, into fashion trendy. All about this comes from adding value. First, to have the material is very difficult because, you know, the cotton that we produce in Cameroon, if the government can help us to have the materials available and even the cost, because we, I did a lot of feasibility studies to have materials in Cameroon, but they are coming from China, passing through Nigeria. At times, it's not even available, and when you, you have it, it's not even a good quality. For us to have the good quality, you have to like pass your command and wait for months before you you have a container that will bring the good quality. And government should like produce the material in Cameroon. It will be difficult to do mass production, like to to supply in U.S. Because I have somebody in Cleveland who's have, who is having a, a, a shop that I'm supplying uh, every three months. And our cry is that the government should like add value, open up schools, employ some of us that can come and teach other people so I can do, do the mass production. Then Clifford Mfomi, the man behind the Wiz Cliff brand that boasts a rich repertoire of stars flaunting his designs. I'm the official designer for one of Cameroon's finest uh, superstars, Stanley Eno. We just did uh, his new song, That's My Way, featuring Sisi Panchak, Loco, and we have Pete Bakati, we have Daphne. All of these stars on, on, on the track, I dress them. They have challenges with accessibility to fabric, because most of these fabrics, we, we get them from Nigeria, Ghana, Senegal. Uh, at times, we have issues with transporting them. It's either there's issue at the border or the transportation, the cost is difficult. I can produce like a hundred outfits in a week, least. Hundred outfits and more. It depends on the, 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 the demand. And I started by myself, but along the line, I had more clients because my network marketing is very strong. So I had to reach out to many people in the diaspora too. We just need more support from from the government, like hands, loans to set up. Because when I started, it was very difficult for me. I could not get a loan, I could not get help in some way. Dressmakers like Michael Tamanjong, in the business for 40 years now, in spite of the difficult terrain. So I've been doing tailoring throughout my life. And for what I uh, benefit from this tailor, if you ask me to start my life, I would like to be a tailor. It's, yeah, yeah, the, the, uh, the, the challenges are always there, for instance, Somebody will bring a dress. Some people, I think, they just only have money for materials. They don't have money to pay. Because if I go to open these things, all this, you see material that a bit, they brought them. To sew them, you sew, people don't collect. So at the moment, if somebody brings something, if it's 10,000, you give half. Let me start your dress so that your money should be pending, not my own money pending. Every day the taxes come up. There is a tax that we cannot even put something outside of the door. Just make a display. There is taxes, so they call it what? Uh, Hygiene tax that what I should have fire extinguisher, have paracetamol. I think those ta taxes and um, polyberator, some some of these things like that, when you get them like that, 
I'm just so bothered. If I'm to leave this salary, it's because uh, of these things that they ask. Some of the difficulties they express are being handled by governments through the Agency for the Promotion of Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises, though the results are yet to be visible. La plupart des entreprises sont dans le secteur informel. Donc il y a d'abord un problème de migration euh, de ces euh, unités de transformation vers le formel, de l'informel vers le formel. Donc euh, ici aujourd'hui, la PME dispose de 10 centres de formalité de création d'entreprise. Most of the SMEs are in the informal sector. So, the first challenge is to get them to migrate from the informal to the formal sector. Today, our agency has 10 centers for the creation of enterprises. We work with the professional associations that rally the producers. First of all, to sensitize them so we can assist in structuring their enterprises and accompany them to centers for the creation of enterprises where they can create enterprises in 72 hours. The main difficulty is that most of them are afraid of taxes. But there are centers that facilitate the payment of these taxes that can help them. We want them to know that they risk remaining small businesses by running away from taxes. These enterprises also have to improve their production costs and quality. APME works to improve the productivity of enterprises. We diagnose specific and general problems faced by these enterprises. We do a restructuring plan and accompany them. We do a restructuring plan and accompany them. We do a restructuring plan and accompany them. We do a plan de restructuration. For now, most of such enterprises are pushing for government support to attain wider markets and to benefit from initiatives like the African Growth and Opportunities Act, AGOA. With AGOA, it's a facility put in place by the American government to facilitate exports of uh, products from African countries, and textile is part of that. And so that's what we are doing. But as I told you, there's an issue of quantity we should call back consciences to this fact that we should consume our local product. For this to happen, they need to be more creative and competitive and to move from the informal to the formal sector, which also requires protecting their brands at the African Intellectual Property Organization. Les Africains, eh, en général, et les Camerounais en particulier, sont très créatifs euh, en matière de design, de, en français, dessin et modèle. Et on a une très forte créativité et beaucoup de créateurs également s'adressent à l'OAPI pour la protection de leur dessin et modèle. Africans in general and Cameroonians are very creative. Some of them come to OABI to protect their works. Intellectual property is a means to protect their designs and models from being copied against contraband. It permits them to export safely to the foreign markets. From a legal standpoint, it gives them the possibility to sue anyone who copies their work without uh, authorization. You don't need to be in the formal sector to have your works protected. Even individuals are covered. We have packages that permit a designer to protect about 99% product at a goal. It is not expensive. Puisque on sait que les designers sont très créatifs. Et on a des formules qui permettent à un designer, en faisant une seule demande, de protéger au moins 99 œuvres. The Cameroon government is also announcing plans to revive the cotton textile industry through partnerships to set up clusters for the production of such clothing, to expand cotton production, and to overhaul processing plants. Il y a des incitations qui sont prévues euh, dans la loi de 2013. 
des incitations administratives, des incitations fiscales, des, des incitations douanières et outre plusieurs autres actions qui sont en cours dans le cadre pour garantir le cadre normatif. The performance Mais of the value chain des, remains des, below des, potential. Des, The cost of production remains a major concern. That is why government has taken several measures to improve competition. Projects to produce more gas, electricity, raw materials like cotton, and renewing the production equipment of sodecoton and sikam. The cotton textile sector offers great opportunities but needs huge investment. There are incentives for this, such as reflected in the 2013 law, administrative, physical, customs, and other measures to guarantee and protect local industries. Government is doing a lot through the SNI. There are actions to renew the production unit of SICAM and Solecoton. We also intend to merge the two companies, as you will see in the industrialization master plan. We have also decided that SICAM produces uniform and other materials for the armed forces, custom, police, penitentiary administration. This is a big market. It will also allow SICAM to regain control of the cotton textile sector. Les eaux et forêts, la police, voilà des efforts que le gouvernement soit en train de faire. Et puis, vous savez que la confection de ces tenues-là, pour nos forces, c'est une très grande part de marché. Et si on arrive à faire gagner cette part de marché-là à la SICAM, ça permettra à la SICAM de reprendre, de prendre de l'emport. African economists also suggest partnerships with success stories across Africa that will step up the current 1.38 million metric tons of cotton lint produced in Africa, representing 5% of the world's cotton production. They also recommend more innovative ways to gain a wider share of the cotton textile clothing market by Cameroon and other African countries. For the textile industry of Cameroon, you know, to have a bigger share of the market, it definitely needs to increase its uh, production capacity. And for this to happen, it means that they need to overcome some major hurdles that, that have been identified in, many, identified in many African countries, one of them being the, the infrastructure button, like energy or uh, transport. And uh, if these hurdles are not overcome, it will be hard to, to compete with, uh, with countries like, like China. For instance, even if you increase the taxes on imports, it will not compensate for the lack of production capacity or for lack of quality. So definitely uh, one of the major steps is to increase the capacity, meaning that the manufacturing sector needs to be bigger. And for the textile industry, we need to have much more direct foreign direct investments. And this means that the business climate needs to be friendlier. We have to understand that uh, the current situation in Central Africa um, calls for, um, let's say, smart way of uh, funding industrialization. As you know, all our countries are under program with the IMF. So it's very difficult to find a fiscal space to, to finance industrialization. So during this IC, as I just mentioned, we, uh, we found the best way of financing industrialization in order to for Central Africa to make the most of its uh, natural endowments, one of them being cotton. For instance, for Cameroon, for them is to really um, make the best use of the best practices that are in Africa. For instance, let's say in Ethiopia, for instance, they were able to build a very strong textile industry and they just did what we recommended. And now Ethiopia is almost maybe Africa's biggest country in terms of, of textile industry. So I think that for the um, Cameroonian businessmen who are who are uh, operating in the textile industry, they should um, make the joint ventures. Already on this path, our Pan-African structures like the African Conference for Trade and Commerce, its founding president, barista Mary Concilia Anchang Unambile, says they have been going around the continent, drumming up support and advocating improvement in the entire cotton textile value chain. Fashion is never outdated. The patterns can change, but people always want to wear clothes. People always want to wear shoes. People always want to have handbags. 
ties, headscarves, and everybody wants to be on the trend. And everybody looks to get the most trendy. So the brands have never changed and the brands keep going. And each brand tries to compete with the other. So we looked into this industry and we realized that in Africa, we have the cotton, which is the original fabric, the original material. But we are less in the talk and we are less in the money market. That it is a sector which has a huge potential where we have to be able to lay emphasis on to see how we can work with those who are in the industry to empower them to make money for our economies, to make money for ourselves and develop ourselves. So we organized the ACC Economic Day last year at Hilton, Hilton, where we brought in the agribusiness uh, actors. And we were looking into the agro industry, the agribusiness, agripreneurs. And uh, at the resolutions that we were, when we took resolutions, we observed that cotton is one of those greens, those plants that has a lot of virtues and that can be used in very diverse products. And so we decided that in those resolutions, we'll look at a sector of activity in the agribusiness that spreads into industry and various different kinds of activities. And so that the value chain can be such that will feed many people, provide many jobs, attract the youth very much, and actually give more women the opportunity to make money out of the activity that they make. Cotton is grown in the northern parts of Cameroon. We observe that there are about 2,048 jigs in this organization, farmers' organization. We observed that there were nine federations, and we observed that there was one confederation, a very structured activity, but that is not well known to us and to many, and that the activity is really very prosperous, but that they have a lot of setbacks in how they develop themselves and how they impact the economy and the market. So it became a major issue for us at the ACC to identify the sector, cotton industry, and work with the actors in the industry to see how we address the issues and how we work together to find solutions and provide solutions because the ACC, as you may know, is an African initiative to federate African businesses to provide African adapted solutions to African problems so that we see how we get a cut into the international market where we as Africans, we can also talk. We can not only be consuming, we can also be actually exporting and there can be that balance because we cannot contribute to an economy that keeps signing international treaties and we do not see how they impact our lives and how they change our lives over 50 years. So that is why the ACC said we are going to advocate for Africa's economic development. That Ghana is actually seriously on board. We have uh, 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 Nairobi is that federates the Africa, Africa origin textile uh, organization in Burkina Faso where they organize CICOT and CICOT was actually also to discuss the issues of what we do with our cotton, how we grow the potential so that it impacts the lives of many and it's actually a successful activity. Now then in the Central African region, we are organizing in Kribi, one of the major cities in the Gulf of the Guinea, the Cotton Textile and Transformation Conference and it is called FICOTA. So we're bringing together stakeholders, we're bringing together the actors so that during this meeting, they can network, they can share their views, they can actually express themselves in the areas of challenges that they face and we can be able to pick the weaknesses and the strengths such that we can work with the policy makers to be able to craft the policies that will actually respond to the needs and that would, the activity will really be prosperous for all. Initiatives like the first Manufacturing and Transformation Forum for the cotton textile industry dubbed FICOTA in Cameroon is a unique opportunity for Africans to spur growth through a stronger, well-structured cotton textile industry.